Welcome back to the Library Choice YouTube channel. Today's class, we learn how to make this cute bow. It's a DIY class, and you can easily do this in five minutes. It's a very simple tutorial, and this just helps to bring out your simple fabric to life. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so this is going to be a beginner's class and we're going to simplify it as much as possible. I'll be using this fabric for this bow. It's a satin fabric and it's a bit thick, so I like the texture that I have. We are working with maybe an Ankara fabric that is soft or a fabric that does not really have structure. You may need to iron interface to this to strengthen it so that it can give you something that is well structured. Okay, so we are creating this bow with this fabric, like I have said earlier, and I'm going to be cutting the lining and the main fabric using this fabric. So I'm just going to put it on fold so that I can cut my lining and main fabric together. And because I want to do some markings on it can see that I'm turning this to the wrong side because I don't want my chalk markings to be on the right side of my fabric so I have folded this fabric into two areas as you have seen and the measurement that you're going to use to fold this depends on how big you want your bow to be so you may need to take the measurement of the area that you're going to be placing this bow to get the length an idea of the length that you're going to need so if you measure like 22 inches as your length you can just add maybe one or two inches to it and if you measure 20 inches as your length you can add one or two inches to it so i want this bow to be around 18 inches long i'm just placing it on the waist area so it's going to be around nine inches upward and then nine inches downward so i'm just going to make this a total of 20 inches that's the length i'm working with so here i'm marking my 20 inches like this and then i'm going to make this into a straight line okay so this is not going to be too big if you want it bigger you can okay so let's say we want it bigger you can just do up to 24 or 25 inches okay so let's just make it bigger so i have 20 inches here i'm just increasing this by four inches so i'm going to make this 24 inches okay so i'm going to be having a bigger hole so we'll have like 12 inches upwards, 12 inches downwards when we place it on our waist area but you can actually place this anywhere you want okay you can even use it to beautify a space so it's totally up to you so now the length i'm working with now is 24 inches now the width that i am working with depends on how wide you want your bow to be so i'm just checking what i have here and I have around 17 and a half inches, which is fine with me. So by the time you fold it, you have something this big. So if you don't want it this big, you can just measure 10 inches, 12 inches. So this is actually totally up to you. But between 10 to 15, 16 inches is fine. So now from my end point here, I'm measuring around 14 inches for my bow then i'm going to add one inch seam allowance to it and that's going to leave me with 15 inches which means i'm working with a measurement of length 24 inches by width 16 inches okay 15 inches including seam allowance so i'm going to connect this and cut it out so that we can have something smaller to work with so I have connected this now and using my scissors, I'm going to cut this out. So I'm cutting both my lining and my main fabric together. So this bow is not actually a rectangular bow. I mean the edges are not straight, they are round as you have seen in the picture. So to create this shape that we have on the hedge i'm going to put this fabric on fold by two like this you can see i have it like this okay so this edge that i have here is because i'm going to still round it around here so it's not going to affect anything that's why i just left it like this assuming you want to make a sharp bow you have to make sure that you don't have any cuts around here but because i'm still shaping it this is not going to affect the outcome of my design so to shape this like i said i'm going to put this fabric on fold like this and then i'm going to put it on fold again so this is just me folding it into four 
like this and then on this open edge here not this closed part on this open edge from the end i'm going to go upwards by five to six inches okay so i'm going up by around six inches and then from there i'm going to connect it in a circular form so you can use your free hand to do this and then you connect like this so that you can have something round okay like this so after connecting like that i'm going to cut that shape that i have that new shape if your scissors cannot take it all at once you can do it in bits so i'm shaping out what i have there and then this is what i have so by the time i open it up i can cut out the folded points here so when you open it up this is what this is looking like you can see that this is no longer straight it is now like a round shape okay so at this point if your fabric is not strong enough and you want to add interface to it this is the point where you go ahead and fuse your interfacing before you sew so you can see that i have my right side facing right side so i'm just going to go ahead to the sewing machine now and then sew this round okay so i'm going to sew this round and then leave a small space to turn it out so i'll do this now and bring it back to show us Okay, so I'm going to have to sew this now and I have this small space to turn it out. So before I turn it, because this is a curved edge, I'm just going to, to notch it around so that by the time I turn it, it's going to lay really flat for me. So I'm notching it. Make sure you don't cut through your seam while notching. And then I'm going to turn this out. Okay, so I've turned this out now and then I'm going to try to straighten everything up because I don't want any part to be puffy and then this small space that I opened to turn it out, you can either fold in your seam allowance and then you sew it or you just use your aiming gum to close it if you don't want to see any seams around that area. So I have my aiming gum here. I'm just going to cut out a bit of it and then I'm going to fold in the seam allowance that I have here. You can see the seam allowance is already folded inwards. So in between this seam allowance, I'm just going to tuck in my aiming gum and it's going to fuse it together for me. So I'll do this with my hot iron. I'll just take this under the sewing machine as you can see and then give it a good press and then bring it back to show us how we're going to fold it okay so i'm gonna head to iron this now i can see how flat it is looking so the next thing you need to do now is to locate the midpoint of this okay so i'm locating the midpoint and then i'm folding it so that it's going to be obvious by the time i open it up so i have my crease line here to show my midpoint then the next thing is for you to pleat the midpoint you can see how i'm just pleating it at the midpoint and then by the time i finish pleating it i have this so you can see what i have here so now this part now i'm going to be holding it with this trimming that i have just to beautify it at the midpoint but if you don't have a trimming you can just cut out some strip of your leftover fabric so what you just need to do now is to take your leftover fabric and then you just fold it into two and then cut out a strip of fabric like this then after cutting out your strip of fabric you put it on fold like this and then you sew so that you can turn it out to have something in it and that is what you're going to use to gather it at the midpoint so after pleating it like this you just place it and then you can tie it at the hem then if you have like bits of pearl you can use it to de design it so now i'm going to refold this again and then you can use your needle and thread to first sew it at the midpoint so it's done so that i can hold it down together for you like this before you wrap it around your before you wrap your trimmings around it you can see how beautiful this is looking so i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me